Hi everybody, my name's Peter Coffin, and you know what's badass? Being alive. So hey, you know how, um, loss of human life is a tragedy? I'm of course talking about the man who self-immolated his protests against the genocide of Palestinian people. It's this thing that happens when people die, um, most people don't like it. I don't like it. I am not a fan of people dying. I've never have been. A lot of people in my life have died, including my best friend, when I was like eight, I think. You know how people burning themselves to death is them committing suicide? Yeah, that's something that apparently is difficult to get people to agree on. Now, I've made a pretty fair number of videos on this channel that are specifically about uh, protesting and the effectiveness of protesting. I would implore you to go back to them. But the things that I try to say about protest in both of them are that if you're going to protest, it's got to be for one of two reasons. The first reason is to educate, which means that you have to do a protest that is in some way going to resonate with people. If you've ever seen um, the People for Ethical Treatment of Animals protest by throwing blood on somebody's dress or you've seen those environmental protesters glue themselves to works of art, you would know that normal people react to that kind of thing uh, thinking that the people who are protesting are totally crazy, which is the correct response because that is totally crazy. A protest that educates and persuades in some way is one that talks about, oh, I don't know, making the world better. In Portland, for instance, when we were out there with CPI, we were telling people, hey, wouldn't it be good if instead of sending tons of money over to Israel's military to blow up innocent civilians, we spent that money on schools and jobs and healthcare? That is education and persuasion. The second reason you would want to do a protest, um, and it's not mutually exclusive, but generally it's one or the other, sometimes both. Second reason is to disrupt. Like the civil rights movement, going back uh, to that, it took place in an era where manufacturing and, and those things were actually the dominant mode of employment. And if you held up workers at a plant, you actually really held up the whole town. But more recent types of protests that disrupt, like sitting in the middle of the road in front of the Holland Tunnel, or really just in front of any people who are trying to go to their job, or even just holding up consumers, like uh, one of my first videos since I came back to this main channel was about these people who were holding up a Starbucks drive through ordering an end to the genocide in Gaza. I agree that that should end. I think that Israel is an apartheid state, and I think that the case against them, it's fairly strong. So strong, in fact, that it's been presented to an international court and has a decent likelihood of being taken quite seriously. Israel is also an imperial outpost in the Middle East, something that allows the West to maintain its power in one of the most oil-rich areas of the world. But basically, a big problem with protesting is more or less these old ideas don't do the same thing that they once did. The types of disruptions that we see nowadays kind of just bother people. In the case of holding up traffic for people trying to go to work, you're not actually holding up society. Uh, productivity isn't really being limited. Uh, labor isn't so specialized in the service sector that everything shuts down because people don't get to their jobs. Instead, what it really does is just fuck up people's day. In some cases, it makes them late, might get them in trouble, might generally just make things difficult and that doesn't persuade people. I, I don't know if you've ever been persuaded by somebody making things difficult for you, but I never have. On top of that, the message behind these protests is often kind of antagonistic towards the people that it's targeting. Like when you're holding up people who are trying to get somewhere, uh, stopping them from getting there, you're kind of saying, hey, you, fuck you. And given this is a short video, I'm not going to get deeply into it, but I think it reflects the kind of anti-human ideology of the left. And I, I bring all this up just because I, I really do think that it shines through in the center of these types of actions. And I think that it's culminated in this immolation. The guy who lit himself on fire in front of the Israel embassy in D.C., I, I think he's the culmination of this kind of ideology. This anti-human, have to have less, that is the way to make things just 
ideology. You find it all the time in these anarchist circles. But it's really important to understand that this is not going to change things. The people who send soldiers off to die in war don't give a shit about a single soldier's life. The capitalists who have their hands on the levers of power and whose interests are served by Western imperialism, particularly uh, in the Middle East in this case, they don't care about an individual soldier's life or an individual person's life. None of this means anything to any of those people. This is a tragedy. It is terrible that this man died. He should not have died. And when I have said things like this, I have gotten absolutely ridiculous pushback. So I responded to a lot of people very angry at a guy for making some gallows humor about this, but ultimately a pretty normie take. But more importantly, I said people absolutely are romanticizing this man's suicide and it should stop. And before you say, uh, where are the people romanticizing this man's suicide? Um, well, they, uh, they came right back at me. Immediately, somebody by the name of Rando Calrissian responded, he didn't, quote unquote, kill himself. He sacrificed his life as protest to show the utter brutality of the genocide occurring right now. It's no different than a hunger strike or the sacrifice one has to do in a revolution. So let's say the only thing wrong with this is that he did kill himself. This man stopped himself from living intentionally. As controversial as it may sound, killing yourself is indeed killing yourself. Rando comes back and says, and nuance trolling is nuance trolling. Reminder that Peter is doing all of this to cave for the opinions of an IDF douche who doesn't even believe his own rhetoric. And I want to remind that this person's response to me simply characterizing it as a suicide was he didn't kill himself. And it relates to this idea that if for whatever reason you push back on the idea this guy's anything other than a martyr, you're a Zionist. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but I am very, very obviously not a Zionist. However, any even mild dissent towards anything said on this subject gets you affiliated with the Zionists. Fuck that. This is just the ultimate expression of useless protest that changes nothing. It does not hijack any levers of power. It does not hijack the conversation in any meaningful way anyways. Uh, yes, we've been talking about this nonstop, but guess who's in control of that discourse? It's not you, anarchists, and it's not me. It's the people who own media outlets and platforms. And let's not even get into the complex web of interest that is the interconnected finance capital uh, industry. Let's talk about media's prime interest, getting attention. What does that? It's conflict. So anything that appears to drive the narrative forward, but doesn't do anything to stop the conflict is perfect. This man's death did not save lives. It will not save lives. It will not change anything about the world. It will simply be used as just another spectacle in the tool sets of every single political group to further its own agenda. It is evidence of whatever they're saying forever. I just want to say I think it's not a good idea to be acting like suicide is a valid path. It's not. After getting frustrated with it, I just tweeted, suicide is actually not badass. Somebody responded with, Aaron Bushnell did not commit suicide. Suicide is something one does when they don't want to be alive anymore. Bushnell would have been happy to go on living, but he saw Gaza as more important than his own life. His death was exactly what he said it was, an extreme act of protest. This Frank Furter Johnson told me 
that this man who lit himself on fire as an act of protest did not commit suicide, saying that he did not commit suicide, that this was some act of protest that had some kind of real effect on things, is in fact glorifying, romanticizing, and venerating his suicide, which should not have happened. It is a tragedy. It is a terrible loss of life. This man was a good man, okay? Was he uninformed on some things? Absolutely, because he thought this was a valid path forward. But he was good. As a person, his time and energy could have been used for something, anything, something that actually does further this cause, like building relationships with people in a community uh, to build some kind of real power. What's necessary to eventually challenge uh, the bourgeoisie, the imperial power in the world. Now, instead of understanding simply that I am not actually attacking Aaron Bushnell, but instead just saying suicide isn't a good idea, suicide shouldn't be venerated, we shouldn't encourage people to kill themselves as though it is a positive step towards world change, some person responded by saying, by this logic, Casey Jones' heroic actions was just a suicide, and he shouldn't be celebrated as a hero. I said, explain how these are the same things. Rapid Release responded to me, he voluntarily died. That means it was a suicide, does it not? I said, sure, but you're leaving out some pretty large aspects that make it not the same. And he said, I'm not saying it's the same. I'm saying it's a suicide. So you think suicide can be celebrated in badass in some cases? I said, he made a split second decision that saved numerous lives. It's incidentally a suicide. It is not primarily a suicide. Rapid Release responded to me, that's the point I'm making in this case. Aaron didn't simply commit suicide. It was an act of self-sacrifice with the goal of saving lives. I said, so you're saying it's the same because just to be clear, he is. He's saying that Aaron Bushnell's suicide was an attempt to save lives in the exact same way Casey Jones' death had the goal of saving lives. But they're not the same. One is setting yourself on fire and accomplishing nothing at all but your own death, tragedy, and one is making a split-second decision to divert a train and not hit a passenger train at full speed. I am saying this because it is so desperately important that we understand that this type of thing is such an energy suck. It gets people so riled into this ridiculous ideology of this is heroic and amazing and beautiful and we need to venerate it and celebrate this guy's ultimate sacrifice for the cause. That's stupid. It doesn't mean that we have to disrespect this guy. Um, I do understand some gallows humor. I'm not going to shit on people for doing that. But we don't have to attack this guy. We just have to stop acting like he did this honorable, amazing thing that changed the world. He didn't. We should not be acting as though this type of action is helpful. I think that we shouldn't be acting as though driving through the Starbucks drive through and saying into the loudspeaker, I would like one order of the genocide stopping, please. Like, I think that is a waste of time and effort. This, it, it goes so much further than that. It's a waste of a person's life. If you see it as anything else and wonder why you're not getting anywhere, that's why. You're putting the idea forward that you want people to die. People don't like war. That's why the pro-Israel people and the pro-Palestine people, they both act like the other side is the only side doing any killing of civilians. And that's wrong. It's completely wrong. It's, it's, it's hilariously wrong. It doesn't mean that there isn't one side of the conflict that is the problem. But we gotta stop living in this idealist hell where you just gotta have the right opinion and position and and and, and tick the right box in the right place it's fucking ridiculous you people are living in a fucking dream world and to the people you want on your side your dream world looks like a death cult like 
I got so many people saying to me, what you're saying looks so bad. You just look, you're going to look so terrible. No. Go to a gas station and tell the person working there um, that you really think it's great that some guy killed himself to stop the war in Gaza. You just go ahead and do that and see, see exactly what the world thinks of you. I think that's pretty much all I have for you today. Um, lick the video, slurp all over that button. Watch Plato is a bitch AI and bomber guy. My latest documentary on the very important documentaries channel. Um, subscribe, maybe become a patron. I didn't want to make this video, so I hope it wasn't terrible. Um, but I, 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 more than that, I hope, I hope you have a good day. I really do.